Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar live development session, IoT application from the field to the cloud using Toradex Embedded Solutions and Microsoft Azure IoT platform. My name is Leonardo. I'm an engineer from the Toradex Brazilian office. Today we will also have as a guest Mr. Vladimir Kamiuchi. He is director from the Microsoft Technology Center Brazil and he will talk about uh, Azure and its context in IoT. While you have a look at the schedule, I will leave some tips in order for you to take the best from this presentation. The first one is that in the end there will be a questions and answer session so you can write down uh, any questions you have and in the end of the webinar I will try to answer as many as possible. If isn't possible you can email Toradex and we will answer you soon. The other tip is that the links I will visit, the websites I will visit, will have their links posted in the chat so you don't have to struggle to get the links, you just have them for you. I will start talking a little about Toradex and its business model. Toradex is a company that has more than 10 years. We work only with ARM-based mod modules, which means we have a low-cost and low-power architecture. Uh, we have a worldwide presence with offices in Japan, India, USA, the Brazilian office, and the headquarters at Switzerland. We only work with direct sales, which means when you're going to buy a computer or module from us, you have to buy it from one of our offices. This is nice because if you buy from a local office, you can buy in local currency. You don't have to worry about import and logistics. Uh, our, our pricing is transparent. If you access our web shop, you can see how much each module, each of our products cost. We have a support system that is free of charge by email. The life cycle of our products is over 10 years, which means you can uh, develop your product, your solution, and you will have uh, our modules available for more than 10 years. This is very nice when you're developing, developing for the medical application area, for instance. And all our software and hardware are developed in-house, which guarantees quality to our solution. We work mainly only with two uh, families of computers on module. They are the Colibri and the Apalis. Colibri is the smallest form factor and the uh, low cost has the industrial interfaces such as I2C, UART, etc. And the Apalis has higher performance and high speed interfaces such as PCI Express. In order to use our computers on module, you need a baseboard, a carrier board, I will focus here on the Calibri Carrier Boards family because in this webinar we will be going, we will be using a Calibri IMX7. So I will focus on the Calibri family. You cannot only buy those boards available on screen for development and also application purposes, but you can also download their projects and build your own based on that. So you don't have to start from scratch if you want to make your own customized base board. Talking about developing, Toradex provides many developer resources, starting from our developer website, which has more than 800 articles and that are updated daily, and they have topics uh, from the hardware and also from software about Linux, Windows Compact Embedded, FreeRTOS, and to our modules. 
we have a community a forum where people can ask and or answer questions and also search for for something they they want to know which speeds up the development process we have the email support directly by developers that is free of charge you just need to send an email to support.arm at .com. and the support uh, can be can be made uh, in the local local languages from the local offices around the world which is nice and we also present to you sometimes video tutorials and webinars such as the one being presented today now uh, before the demonstration I would like to present you to Amir Kambiuchi he is the head at Microsoft Technology Center Brazil and he is going to give you an overview about the Azure platform and contextualize it in the IoT scenario so Vladimir I will pass the control to you now thank yes. you for your presentation very nice so hello guys how are you today uh, I'm changing for my presentation I think you can see my, my screen now right so how are you today welcome to this webinar as in the same way as Leo said uh, it's a great opportunity to have a discussion around what is Stardex in Microsoft Azure and how we can support IoT solutions in many industries. Uh, my name is Valdemir Cambiuti. I am the Chief Architect and the MTC Lead in Brazil. Uh, actually, today we have 41 MTCs worldwide. Actually, we have 41 MTCs worldwide, and thinking about that, we have lots of partners, global partners and local partners, to support this action for each MTC. Uh, in Brazil, we are running uh, the MTC in Brazil, Sao Paulo, in Rio de Janeiro since 2012. And Toradex is a great uh, partner for us, uh, supporting us in many discussions around IoT and the offerings that we are running at MTC. So it's a, it's a great partnership with Toradex and lots of offerings and discussions uh, around that with many customers from different industries. So let's spend a time, a uh, few words about what is the IoT and how Microsoft is supporting IoT discussions at this moment. And thinking about that, what, why, why we should watch this session, uh, this webinar? Uh, in our perspective, because two things. Uh, because first of, all, first of all, because IoT is a critical component for many discussions around digital transformation. As we will see soon, uh, today we are having lots of conversations with different companies about how to transform, how to move the business for a digital space, so impact the business uh, uh, using big data, for example, or data that you are collecting via sensors or devices, uh, this is the, the component, the main component for digital transformation, and IoT is part of that. And second, because IoT is opening thousands of opportunities for new business and new services in different companies in different industries is scaling because the cloud so actually today cloud is a great enabler for IOT solutions so putting these two uh, uh, topics together have lots of discussions around IOT right so thinking about what we have today in the the moment that we are in the market we can say that we are in the middle of what we call fourth industrial revolution so it's nice to see that we have from time to time uh, lots of discussions uh, around what is important to support a different uh, new business for example and lots of different uh, screens or not or lots of different uh, solutions can combine this kind of innovation as you can see here uh, we have five important innovations during this time that is ready to go as strategy for mobility, uh, companies using social networks, cloud supporting different business storage or computation for uh, your business, big data, and now cognitive services. Actually, IoT is using uh, is using all these topics uh, for new services and new components in the business. Because we are 
in this uh, time, you can say actually that IoT, it's all about data. So that's very nice because actually what you are doing with IoT for many industries is collecting data from the environment to impact, to change uh, the way you are doing business. So this is very important because in the same way we are collecting data, uh, we can say that our IoT, it's all about insights. Uh, what you should do with the data that you are collecting, for example, using a Toradex device in front of your uh, the field, it's possible, for example, thinking about a process efficiency. So you are changing a manufacturing plant or you can get more information to reduce costs in your store or you even uh, develop new business models using, for example, devices, collecting data and putting a new uh, uh, environment for your customer. When we have a, any kind of business from banking to retail uh, to health manufacturing. So this is a huge impact and actually to support all these uh, innovation, we can say that the cloud is the enabler for IoT. So thinking about cloud and we have lots of discussions around cloud support and IoT, we need to remember that we have three types of services in the cloud. So many times you are supporting uh, just virtual machines in the cloud space. So you can say that we have the infrastructure as a service. This is a host of many VMs that you have uh, locally to support your business. In second, you can say that we are creating a new solution, a new application to support your business. Uh, in this space, most of IoT solutions will be running like that as a platform, as a services, and you are using the cloud to build a new solution. And for sure, you are uh, Hotmail, emails, Office 65, CRM, uh, lots of applications that you have a subscription to consume. They are ready to go. So thinking about these three kinds of services in the same way, thinking about a cloud, you need to remember that we have lots of regions or data centers to support globally your solution. So in the Microsoft Cloud, we have these uh, uh, distribution, these uh, support globally, uh, around 30, 34 regions and 26 data centers online to support different customers from different parts of the globe. And what is running in, in front of these uh, infrastructure? It's a huge platform with different components to support different needs for uh, different kinds of solutions. And here you can see uh, many blocks uh, for infrastructure as a services to support compute, storage, networking, and the platform as a services. As I said, IoT is a sample like that. And here you can see the gray box, the analytics in IoT space we still have lots of components and resources in the cloud to support specifically IoT solutions. So when we are thinking about IoT solutions, not only the device is part of that, but we need to think about the messaging, the device management, the dashboard to visualize the data that you are collecting. That's the reason why Microsoft is so involved in this kind of project, because we have all the support in the cloud to support actually this kind of solution. So it's possible to say that today we have uh, what we call Microsoft Azure IoT. It's a family of services in the cloud of Azure to support IoT solutions. Here you can see uh, a few topics or a few components of that. And Leo will be presenting part of these components during this demonstration. In the same way, a very important one uh, will be the IoT hub. So thinking about IoT, uh, uh, after you get all the information from your device, for example, using Toradex, we will need a hub to receive messages from sensors to send to the cloud. So IoT Hub is the first, first frontier to receive the message before doing uh, any, any kind of solution or business transformation. And in the same way, it's possible to think in a suite of IoT. So a bundle of services, the IoT suite, can uh, offer to you a predefined architecture to speed up the development. So in many cases, it's possible to use uh, a ready template uh, to speed up the solution. And you can see, for example, topics as notification 
Application Hubs, uh, Power BI as a dashboard to visualize the data, stream analytics, or even machine learning with lots of tools to have predictivity analysis, for example, from the data that you are collecting. So this is the reason why we are combining lots of components to support as many uh, different situations or scenarios as possible. Here, for example, we have a, a sample of template, a remote monitoring, where we can see that it's possible, for example, using a Toradex device in, in, your, in your space or in your environment, sending messages to the IoT hub, and using our stream analytics, we can query the data that we are using. For example, it's possible to use a SQL query like to select the data from the IoT Hub and show them in a Power BI, in a dashboard for visualization, in a website, for example. And it's possible to do anything, any, many, many other topics, for example, presenting for a bank or for uh, any other space in the industry. So this is just a highlight, many topics that we have. Uh, it's possible to connect still in different platforms. So we have lots of certified IoT partners. Toradex is one, a very important one. Uh, and it's possible so to connect as, as much as platform that you already have in your environment to create this most sophisticated IoT solution that you need to change your business, right? So that's it. This is uh, uh, just a highlight of a few topics. Uh, we'll be together uh, during this session, and at the end, we can answer more questions about that. Enjoy the session. Thank you very much. The word is with you, Leo. Thanks. Thank you, Vladimir, for your presentation. Let me just share my screen with you. Okay, now I will talk a little about the goals of this, the following demonstration, the live coding part of the webinar, I want to show you where to begin from, uh, how to find the, the information to start using Toradex and Azure services and solutions. I will introduce you to some tools required for, for this, and by using those tools, we will build a memo application that sends data to the cloud and we will be able to visualize this data using a dashboard. In order to do so, we will use as tools, as hardware tools, the Colibri IMX7 computer module and the Iris Carrier Board. And as cloud, tools, we will use Azure IoT Hub and Stream Analytics and Microsoft Power BI. I will go into more detail with you later. Uh, here is a diagram of the application we will develop today. Notice that in our hardware we will install Node.js, which is a JavaScript interpreter, so the coding will be done in JavaScript or in Node, I will use them as synonyms, even though we know that theoretically they are not only practice. And I will use Node.js to read the value from a switch and put this value, copy this value to a LED. This will be the first part in order for us to get used to the hardware. And then we will connect to the Azure IoT Hub and send the switch values to the cloud. And this will be the second part. And the third and last part will be uh, using Stream Analytics to get data from the IoT Hub and sending it to Power BI. As Vladimir said, uh, Stream Analytics is a query. It has a filter it, that has inputs and outputs. That, and these will be the two used to connect IoT Hub and Power BI. Now, I will turn on my webcam so you can see the embedded system. And we are going to start with embedded system and Azure IoT Hub, okay? Looking at the webcam, you can see we have here the Colibri IMX7 computer module. It is inserted into the Iris carrier board. We also have a, a auxiliary board with switches and SMD LEDs, right? 
we will be connecting through Ethernet cable connection, although you sure could use a, a Wi-Fi adapter or a mobile connection, okay? And the communication with the development computer, with the host computer, will be by using a serial connection, okay? And the first thing I'm going to do is open a serial connection. Okay, I already have a setup. Notice that you must set up the correct baud rate in order to connect. And I will power on the system. It will start boot. While it boots, I'd like to show you a web page from the developer website that have a step-by-step -step on how to flash embedded Linux to IMX7 modules. And it is here that I found a link uh, to pre-built images that Toradex provide for evaluation. And we will be using this pre-built image today. Okay. So this is how you start working with our module. Now the system has already boot. I will log in into it. All right. And first of all, I will install the tools required uh, to develop our application. They will be Node.js and the modules or libraries used by, by Node.js to connect to Azure. Those libraries are provided by Microsoft, okay. You can see there is a an Azure GitHub where you can find the libraries not only for Node.js but for C, Java, etc. Which means you can code in the language you prefer or the language which fits better to your application. You don't need to stick with one, okay. So I will start using the OPKG, which is the package manager for the Angstrom distribution, to install Node.js. Let's list the modules related to Node. We have interest in the Node itself and in the NPM, which is the Node package manager. We will use this to install the Azure libraries, okay? So we just have to open kg, install Node.js, and Node.js npm. I have already done it, okay, but it wouldn't take more than a minute or so. It is very fast, and now I will install the libraries, right? webinar directory, change to it, and npm install Azure IoT device at latest. This information I found here in the Azure IoT SDKs, I found that npm has the modules. Okay, so this is where this information comes from. It will take a bit of time and I will connect by using the HTTP protocol. Azure IoT Hub also supports MQTT and AMQP, which are a better fit for IoT purposes. But since the HTTP is easier to set up in a closed network, is the one I'm using today. Everything you have to change is when you're going to install the specific protocol module, you would have to change it. Okay, such as here. Here's how to install the AMQP library. You must already be finishing. You will also find in the GitHub the APIs to to use those libraries, of course, 
and much more information. When I start developing the application, uh, the first thing I will do is set a loop of one second that, okay, it was installed, that will read the, the switch and put a value in an LED. And then after we know that the hardware is working, I will go to the Azure IoT Hub. Okay. This library yeah, takes less to be installed. As you can see, we have both of them installed here. Now I will create a webinar.js file to write our code. Set interval is the way to set a loop. Node.js. And I will write a function named loop that will be executed every one second. It will be a simple function. It has a read switch here. And the read switch function. The read switch function, basically for those who are not used to accessing hardware in Linux, it will use the file system to do so through the sysclass API. This means everything needed to configure and access the hardware is made by reading and writing operation to files in the system, which is very easy. And also, Node.js has a built-in library to access the file system. So the first of all, we are going to read our switch, OK, and call it as UTF8. And then after the switch is read, there will be a function that checks for error, and otherwise has the value. We'll just copy this value to the switch to the switch now to the LED. And also check for errors. Okay, in order to do so, we have to to call the file system module. And also have the paths to the switch and to the LED. Okay. As I said, we will use the sysclass API. The switch is the GPO 139. These values I have found by consulting the Teradex documentation for the Calibri IMX7 module and the Iris Carrier Board. Okay. I found the correspondent value of the pin header to, to the Linux kernel driver. One hundred and twelve, and that's it. We have our application written. Before we can start it, we need to export the GPIO pins, GPIO pins, and configure them. Thank you. 
12, the LED will be an output, and the 139, the switch, will be our input. That's right, if everything is right, we can start our application. There it is, looking at the webcam, you can see that when I press the button, the LED is copied. The LED has the value according to what I'm doing. It has a small delay because we are reading the switch value every second. All right, if I lower the, the read time, the delay will, will be lower also. And right now, we can start configuring the IoT Hub. So I uh, will go to the Azure portal, portal.azure.com. In order to access this interface, you must have configured a Microsoft Azure account. And then we will have access to this, and you can find in the top left corner of the screen a button named New where you can select Internet of Things, and there is the IoT Hub we're interested at. Let's name it like Webinar 1. Select a tier, which depends on the needs of your projects. It has the messaging number, number of messages you can send every day, number of partitions. I will not go into too much detail here, you can go to the Microsoft documentation for this, and we don't have much time, right? And I will create this IoT Hub. It will take some time to, to deploy, so I have already left one IoT Hub here configured. Uh, you can see in the the overview, the number of messages exchanged in a day and the number of devices connected. And the first thing we have to do in order to, to connect to the cloud is we have to, sorry, we have to create our device. And in order to do so, I will use a software named Device Explorer, right? Uh, it can be found in the Azure GitHub. You can download it and use it for Windows in order to manage the Azure IoT Hub. For those who use Linux, there is a command line interface which has the same functionality. All right, I will stick to the Device Explorer. In order to connect to it, I have to find the Azure IoT Hub connection stream. I will copy and paste the connection stream here. OK, now I'm connected to the IoT Hub, and I will create a new device. We already have a webinar. Let's call it Webinar 2. Device was created. Now we can have we can look at it. It is already in our list, although it hasn't been updated here yet. We'll soon. And we also have a connection stream for this device. Uh, in IoT Hub, every device has its own, own string for security matters, and this string must be in the embedded system. And this is what I am going to do now. I will, oops, sorry. I will create a variable here in connection string. and paste our connection stream. As you can see, the device ID here 
here is the name of our device, and the host name is the name of our IoT hub. And now I have already left uh, some code portions just to paste uh, while I explain it to save us some time. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is to add the required modules to connect to the IoT Hub by using the HTTP protocol. For this, we must have these three objects, protocol, client, and message. And then using the protocol and the client, we can create our specific client for this device. From the connect from its connection string, all right, using HTTP, and we also need a function to send data to the cloud. What this function do is first it and it encodes our data to the JSON format, and then encapsulates it in a message that is in the Azure IoT Hub format. I will also send the embedded system timestamp to the cloud because Node is an asynchronous language, which means that the sending of data might not be sequential, as I call this function. Okay, so this guarantees that the data in the cloud will be reliable and we will have a reliable timestamp. And there is a send event function that will send our message and print it to the console or otherwise throw an error. There are some things we still need to do here. The first one is we have to create our data object. Okay, let's have a computer module ID that is a unique identifier for our for our embedded system in order to recognize it when we are using the visualization tool. Let's call it TDX one two three four. All right. We also must send the switch value. As of now, we don't have one. And the timestamp. That's right. And we must add the switch value to the data object. And the last thing we have to do is call the send data function. Let's pass it to our read switch function. All right. Send data. I believe that's it. If there is something I've forgotten, I will correct it. So let's just run our application. You notice I don't have to compile because Node.js is an interpreted language. Data is being sent. As you can see. Oh, here I will stop. Notice the timestamp went from 11 seconds to 6. This is why it is a good idea to send it along with the device. In order to, to, to see if IoT Hub is getting the messages, I will monitor our device. Let me play. Let me start the code again. 
So we started receiving events. Uh, Device Explorer is getting the events from the IoT Hub. So this guarantees we are connected to the cloud right now. This was the second part of the webinar I wanted to show you. Now let's go to the Stream Analytics, which is the service that will connect us to the Power BI. In order to create a Stream Analytics, I just have to select New in the left corner, go to Internet of Things, Stream Analytics, and create it. using the same resource group and location of the IoT Hub. This one is created very shortly. It doesn't take too much to deploy, so I will wait. And the first thing we're going to do is connect the IoT Hub as input. As you can see here, we have inputs, outputs, and the query are our filter. So I will add IoT Hub with input alias input one to make things easy for us. Select IoT Hub as a source and choose the correct IoT Hub. Everything else is already configured according to our needs. You can see the, the ingestion of events is made in the JSON format, the same we are using in the embedded system. That's all required. And I must also add Power BI as the output. Power BI is not part from the Azure, so it must have a, you must create a separate account uh, for it, and this is why when you select Power BI, you have to authorize the service. The data set name and the table name will be webinar. It will be used in the Power BI tool. I will create it. And now let's write the query. First of all, we will select the data that comes from the embedded system. Notice I will use the same syntax as the one in the Node.js code. Okay, it is going into Power BI, which we named output one, and it's coming from IoT Hub, which we have named input one. This would only copy data from input to output, but, but there is a nice feature uh, that can be implemented, which is the windowing. Windowing basically, uh, let's say, compresses data, you know, because imagine you have thousands of devices sending data every second to the cloud, and you have Power BI, which has a ingestion uh, limitation. So you use a tumbling window in order to send data to the output every five seconds only. And the data will be compressed by using a mathematical simple function, a statistical simple function, such as average, minimum value, standard deviation, and things such as that. The computer module ID is always the same, and the switch wall will be the average. This means we are sending data from the embedded system 
to the cloud every second, and from the IoT hub to the Power BI every five seconds. So we have, a, say, a compression ratio for of five, uh, five to one here. I will save. and start the system. It might take some time. So I have already left a string job running here. It has input, it has output, and a query, which is uh, pretty much the same as the one we wrote. Actually, is identical. All right. So let's go to the Power BI tool. As I said, you must create an account for it, and here is the webinar data. You can see there is a yellow asterisk showing that this data was recently created. You don't have to configure Power BI. The moment uh, Stream Analytics starts outputting data, this will be automatically created. And you can see we have a sandbox here with many visualization possibilities. I will start with a bar, uh, a column, column chart. I will add the switch value as the value and the timestamp in the X axis. And there will also be an ID for identif identification of the system. You will notice this will not refresh automatically yet, but first let's add a gauge here. Gauge could be useful. Uh, for instance, uh, we can see the percentage of time the push button uh, was pressed. We can set minimum value and maximum value. Let's have a target of dot eight here. This is nice. Uh, let me just keep sending data to the cloud now. Okay. In order to make this report refresh automatically, we will save it. As you can see, it was created, and we will use it to put the charts in the dashboard. Just choose the webinar dashboard here. All right, here we have our charts. Let me press the switch. It is being updated. And notice, since data is being outputted only Every five seconds, there might be a delay, all right? And this is a near real-time visualization system. So you might have a little delay. And here it is, an application we built from scratch. We have coded uh, the embedded system part. We have set up the Azure tools, and we have a nice dashboard to visualize our data. This is the, the initial application I wanted to present to you. I hope uh, it was helpful in order to show you where to look into if you want to start. Okay. I would like to and now thank Vladimir Kamyuchi and Microsoft for the partnership that resulted in this webinar presentation. And now, from now on, I will answer some of your questions, as, as many as possible. All right, I'm back here. We have a question. I will ask Vladimir to answer this one. Uh, I will read it to you. I read on Azure Web 
that it's free for up to 8,000 messages and I don't see any 30-day eval period. What is the correct information? I would also ask Vladimir uh, to tell us uh, what is the advantage of having a cloud uh, service instead of a local deployment? Uh, right, Leo, thanks for the question. Uh, uh, starting about the, the, the cost, uh, we need to know we have different types of services. So it's possible to use three different types of services. Infrastructure as a services, for example. When we have only virtual machines uh, from our solution running in the cloud, so we are cutting costs of data center uh, in the simple way. Uh, the platform as a services, when we are developing our solution using components and resources native in the cloud with more scalability, for example. And the software as a services, when we are just consuming a subscription and a services ready to go, ready to be used, for example, as Hotmail, Office 365, so all these kind of software ready to be used. For all these, the printing structure as data center, air condition, and energy, water, maintenance, so cloud can support companies to cut costs of infrastructure and still give the power of a number of resources to support the volume of data we express, expect from IoT solutions. So that's the reason why today cloud is a huge enabler for more complex IoT solutions uh, for many industries. And specifically about IoT Hub, we have different pricing models or scale tiers to support the messaging and device management. So the free one uh, supports only one IoT Hub per subscription. So we can subscription of Azure or, for example, if you have a MSDN subscription or uh, just a free one as a developer from the Azure, you can support 80,000 messages per day to be consumed. So in this space, uh, we don't have the attached 30 days to be used in the IoT uh, pricing model. This is uh, a subscription time. So, so normally, if you create a MS subscription, you will get lots of hours of Azure, and inside this subscription is possible IoT, uh, free uh, IoT Hub uh, free for subscription. So it's possible to create this more than 30 days because it's in, the, in your plan. In the same way, uh, thinking about a production time, we will need to change the standard pricing model from these 80,000 80, messages per day more, more robust uh, size to support IoT. So in this way, we have the S1, for example, uh, to support 6 million messages per day, S2 to support 300 million of messages per day, and so forth. So it's possible to uh, scale up your solution, changing your IoT hub uh, to support more and more messages for your solution. The MSDN and the subscriptions as a free in the Azure, and you can attach uh, the IoT hub subscription only one to test and have some dev test time, right? Okay, we have another question here. I will also uh, please, uh, ask Vladimir to please answer this one. Is it possible to save data in a database? Oh, okay. Well, yes. Uh, actually, indeed, yes. Uh, the answer, uh, quick answer is yes. It's possible to send data to a database. And actually, after we receive messages from devices in the field uh, using the IoT Hub, we can host all these those messages in the cloud with no additional costs, actually. So what we have in front of your IoT solution receiving all those messages, and during seven days, it's possible to do queries in this volume of data uh, using, for example, the stream analytics. So it's possible to use the stream analytics 
to create SQL queries in like, something like that, on the hub and send them to uh, different components. For example, to Power BI, uh, as uh, Leo uh, just showed, uh, for a database, for another uh, process that you have in the cloud, or even even if you are consuming, for example, a file share, you can send the data in, in a volume of another, uh, another uh, system that you have consumed data from the cloud. So it's possible co to combine or to send all messages that you, you are receiving uh, for uh, different parts of your solution. Important one, besides all database or, or a dashboard for visualization, is the machine learning. So it's possible to do some analytics using uh, statistic techniques inside the machine learn to consume the data that you are receiving uh, via uh, IoT Hub to create, for example, prediction. So this is a very common uh, scenario for IoT. Uh, for example, for retail, I guess it's uh, um, getting, for example, number of people that you are, you have inside my store, and, and you can use analytics or machine learning to understand the uh, conversion rate that you have in the number of people that is entering in the store and number of people that it's buying something inside your store. This correlation and using techniques uh, in, from the statistics. Uh, you have inside the machine learning, so it's possible to create lots of combinations and change the business because of that. So r yes, it's possible to send the data to your archiving, for example, only, but machine learning will be your uh, a final uh, frontier for uh, IoT solution. Hello, people. Uh, the first question I will ask Vladimir to answer. Uh, it is here, right. I'm going to read to you. Thank you, Leonardo. One of the questions when going to the cloud is about cost. When it is viable to go to the cloud instead of using a local server? Oh, that's a wonderful. Uh, uh, thinking about cost, actually, uh, we need to remember, as I said during my presentation, that we have three different types of services. So, for example, uh, the first one is to have the local server, and for example, if your project are supporting a, it's supporting a local server, normally you have lots of other costs around the server. So, for example, the maintenance, the power, the energy, uh, the water to support the air condition. So, lots of costs associated with that server. So, one specific service that you have in the cloud is the infrastructure structure as a service. When we have a virtual machine from your solution running in the cloud, doing this approach, we are cutting costs of local data center. So many companies, uh, besides going to an IoT solution, uh, it's possible to think about uh, reducing costs in data center, moving to an infrastructure as a services approach. Uh, secondly, if you are running in a more scalable solution, Sometimes we don't, we don't have all the resources in our local server. So we, we will need, as the same need that we have for IoT, in an entire platform that we have only in the cloud. So the platform as a service can support the scalability, the volume of data that is sometimes impossible to support with a local server. Oh, for, or, for example, uh, supporting a local solution with a local server, we need to buy lots of hardware locally uh, to put in your data center to support the number of meshes, messages that we are expecting for that solution. So we, for many cases, these uh, create a, a huge investment for the solution. So cloud can cut, cut costs on uh, infrastructure as a service side, running only VMs, or supporting the development of a scalable device, a scalable solution using the platform as a services as a good, great solution, a great option instead of using local server, right? Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, how much does a TurboNet platform for IoT costs? Okay, 
for this one, I am going to access the Toradex web shop where you can find this information. Let me just put it in English language for you. Okay. Here we have the prices of all of our products for a single one to the large quantity. Uh, I have used the Freescale, the N NXP IMX7 Colibri module. It starts at $60 for one piece. And I have also used, going back here, the Iris carrier board. You can see it starts at $55, but the Viola would be a, a nice fit for IoT applications and it starts from $22, okay? You could also browse for all of our products, search for the one that fits better to your IoT application. Okay, we have another question here. I would also like to uh, please ask Vladimir to answer this one. Right. Is it, is it possible to save data in a database Yes, yes, for sure. Actually, uh, it's possible to combine uh, different uh, targets for the data that you are collecting uh, from the IoT hub, for example, in IoT solution. So IoT solution is the hub for all the messages that we are receiving, and it's possible to map all the data and send them to different targets as a database, or a spreadsheet, or a Power BI for visualization. So it's possible to create lots of combinations, uh, how to visualize or just to store the data after we get this message from the device. Thank you, Vladimir. Uh, just to finish the question and answer session, we don't have many more questions, so I would just leave a tip. If you're starting uh, to learn Azure, it has a learning path page, which has many informations. Okay, also from IoT Hub and others, there is also an Azure calculator to simulate the costs you would have over the internet. And I believe that's it. Regarding Toradex, we have the developer website, which you have already seen. And I will finish the presentation here. Thank you, Vladimir. Thanks, everyone, for participating today. I hope it was helpful, and see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks.